Is there a German people? Gibt es ein deutsches Volk? I think that... Hallo, guten Abend und willkommen bei Berlin Aviv. Heute Abend spreche ich mit Tuvia Tenbom. Er ist sehr bekannt in Deutschland, vor allem durch seine Bücher Allein unter Deutschen, Allein unter Juden und Allein unter Flüchtlingen. Jetzt hat er sich dem Brexit angenommen. Allein unter Flüchtlingen. Und jetzt hat er ein Buch geschrieben über den Brexit und das Volk der Briten. Allein unter Briten. Ich begrüße Sie. Welcome, Tuvia Tenenbaum. Uh, can you tell us what brought you to Germany right after you wrote this book, Allein unter Briten? Okay, so just a, a little bit cor a correction. Um, yes. Allein unter Briten is not about... We are talking English, right? Yes, of course, yeah. yeah. Okay, Allein unter Briten is not about uh, Brexit per se. It's about the British people. Mm -hmm. It's about the Northern Ireland. It's about the Scots. It's of course about England, about English, and about Wales. And also, we started, I went with my wife, Izzy. We started the journey actually in... Uh, Ireland. In Ireland. And originally, the idea was to write a book about Brexit. Yes. And theater, because I'm a theater person. Of course, and, and you I have always, And I have always loved the English theater, British theater, but mostly the English theater. I always a fan of this. I used to be, go there once a year. And so the, the original idea was to write about theater and Brexit. But once we arrived in, since the start from Ireland, and the reason why I went to Ireland first is because I wanted to see the border, the backstop. One of the biggest problems of, of the Brexit was the, the thing, the issue with the border you know, yes. between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. Yes. So, but through the journey, very few people wanted to talk about Brexit. Mm -hmm. Brexit was not on their minds. They didn't care much about Brexit. Yeah. What they did care about was Palestine yes. and Israel. And that was the interesting thing. So instead of the book being a lot about Brexit, It was more a lot about the Arable people on earth called Jews. I, and that was very interesting. It caught him by surprise. It's like, it's not what I expected. It's not what I wanted to write about. Mm. But when I ask people in those four nations, but mainly in the first three nations, meaning the Irish or Northern Irish and the, the Scottish and the English, of course, what was on their mind? what would they have liked to change in the world, it almost always came back to the Jewish issue, yes. to the Israel issue, to the, the Jewish state. Or, well, why or do you Jewish think it's that? They didn't want to talk about Brexit because it, it's like they're already stuffed with Brexit. They But why they don't want to talk about Brexit? Because the Brexit, because they, they had enough with it. You know, they, they voted years before about Brexit, the majority at least. So nobody wanted to talk about Brexit. It's already up to you with Brexit. Yes. They had the feelings, they had the, they had the emotions, they had the thinking, they had all, everything. But you know? where does where does I mean the fascination with Israel and Palestine is also in Germany quite prominent? But why do the Irish and the British care so much about Israel and Palestine? I think that uh, this is a, this is one of the interesting interesting things when you go and you travel in Europe. And so far, you know, the nations that I covered, you know, again and again, I see that the problem of the people talking about, caring about um, Israel. Why is that so? I mean, I, I did ask some Jews, you know, in Gateshead, when I entered Gateshead, and I asked yeah. some Jews, Yeshiva guys, as they call, 
and I asked them to explain to me why. So ultra-Orthodox Jews ultra -Orthodox that stereotypically you know, have a Jewish attire. Yeah, but they are young. They are, are the generation yes. of tomorrow, you know, they're 18 yes. plus, you know, yes. not the 80 plus. And, and one of you know, these and boys... They, and they are like more in their community, so... Because the rest of the, almost the rest of British Jews would not talk about it because they didn't want to talk about it, you yeah. know, which is another issue which I cover in the book. But these are like almost like carefree people, you know, they feel more comfortable talking about it. And one of the things they said to me was, look, where did the first blood libel against Jews start? Where was the first blood libel in history? Norwich, England. In, uh, in York, it, the massacre no, of York? No, before York. This before York. Else. And then they told me about the massacre of York, you know, yeah. where the people, all the Jews were put in a, in a, in one of those buildings, in one of those houses, and, and then burned alive to death, till they died. You know? So, and of course, the, the addict of the expulsion of Jews, you know, which happened also in the, in the English history. And, and when you think about it, I mean, uh, one thing England is very famous about is, is literature, theater yes. and literature. And, and one of the most outstanding literary works yes. of the British culture is not just Shakespeare, but it's also, if you remember, the Canterbury Tales. Remember that? I, I remember only the Canterbury Ghost from Oscar Wilde. But that's okay, later. This is, this, oh, this is much later, my dear <laughs> And more trivial literature. Later. <laughs> so the Canterbury Tales, and, and one of the tales, this is Chaucer. Mm -hmm. If you know, this is one of the pillars of, of the English culture, you know, yes. so you have Chaucer, and Chaucer wrote a beautiful, wonderful book called The Canterbury Tales. Okay. And so, in so it, you have a story, and, in, and, and you have like, it's a collection of stories of people who go to some place, you know, to... And have to fairy tale place. adventures. It's, uh, it's um, not a fairy tale, it, yeah, it, it's not exactly history things, but yeah. it's like, of course, it's invented, but, but it is a story of pilgrims, yes. you know. And one of the stories is... Uh, of a young boy, Christian boy, who always liked to sing songs in the praise of the Holy Mother, the Virgin Mother, the Mother of Jesus. And he wandered his way one day to a Jewish neighborhood. And of course, what did the Jews do? Cut his head off, because he was a Christian boy. And, and, and it's, a, it's, it's a very anti-Semitic, very well written, mm -hmm. you know, just mind you, yeah. But yeah, and, and this boy, you know, even after his death, when his head was cut off, the head kept singing the praises for the Virgin Mother. Okay. So mm. it's like, you should just say, okay, I get it. Mm. It's embedded in the culture. Yes. I mean, it's like, you, know, you were in New York, you know, for many, many years. Uh, it's, called, it's called today Clifford's Tower. Yeah. And a lot of, it's one of the, tourist sites, you know, you go to York, you go to see it, it's beautiful, you know, on top of the hill, you know, it's, everything is grass, you know. Yeah. And there is a little stone on the side explaining that the Jews were killed there, you know, in 1100 or something. And, but nobody reads it, because yeah. it's, for years and years and years, the citizens, the residents, the citizens of York refused to admit that, mm -hmm. you know, refused to make it public, so to speak. Under pressures, but they agreed to do it. That place used to be called Jewberry. Jewberry, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I asked people, we have it all on video, and I asked people, you know, it's like I stopped people going on the way, they go to the Clifford Towers, and I say, can you read this? And it was very interesting the way the people reacted when they read it. 150 Jews buried the life. <laughs> Some of them were laughing like idiots. Okay. You know. So it's, it's like, it's so embedded, mm. you know, it's like, you can see just the way they react to a murder that happened in their country, you know. So in, so in... So many hundreds of years ago, long before Palestine, the issue of Palestine so, even existed. So, yeah. so in your, but in your book, you, I mean, maybe like a quarter of your book is, is uh, really talking a lot about your encounters with people, especially um, engaged in the uh, boycotting Israel movement and the BDS movement. Yeah. And, and I see a lot of Palestinian flags and demonstration signs And that. Why is it nowadays that also like um, the, the immigrant culture in Britain 
brings this anti-Semitism uh, to, to flare up so much again. Okay, the, the, it's not the immigrant culture. I mean, this is very important to understand. I mean, in, in England, you can see in England, you know, mm -hmm. go further, you know, go to England, you know, where they are not going to go like idiots with the Palestinian flags, but yeah. they do their stuff with, for Palestine, of course. They say to you all the anti-Semitic stuff, but they are not, you know, going around in public like, like the Irish people, you know, in Northern yeah. Ireland or in the public and, of Ireland. You know. and, people like, and the private homes, you know, they hang up the Palestinian flags. They are not doing that kind of thing. Yeah. But it's, when you ask the, the immigrants, you know, when you're talking about, like, the Muslim immigrants, you know, like, and you have to understand, in, in, in Great Britain, most of the Muslim immigrants are not from Iraq, or from Syria, as you are from, you're talking Pakistan, you're yes. talking Afghanistan, you're talking these kind of things. And you ask them about these issues, or just asking them anything, but, but they don't even care. The issue of the Middle East is not their issue. Their issue is totally different issues. You know, they are, they are not being treated the same way as the whites, etc., etc., etc. The, the issue, the, the, the anti-Semitism in the culture is much more with the so-called white people. Yeah. It's the history, it's European history. It's, it's uh, if you mind me saying it, it's a Christian history. Mm -hmm. I mean, since we know Christianity, yes. si not since we know Christianity, but a little bit rephrase it, since, since Rome took over and it became Christianity. Yeah. Became but, because Christianity started as a Jewish sect. But do, you, but do you know, actually in Germany, the first monotheist religion was Judaism because it came with the Romans and then only later Christianity came into Germany. Um, well, but, Jews just started everything. But since we're the, talking about... The real German is Yiddish. The real German. The real yeah. German is Yiddish. You know, I come, now, I come then the from... It started with Yiddish. Yeah. And then the German. And, um, yeah. you know, the Europeans miss their old empires and want them back. That was a quote from Nigel Farage in one of your interviews. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you think that is also some way to describe, you know, uh, the, the, the construction of a European Union as a supranationalist state or as the abolishment of national states that gets criticized by M Nigel Farage, who was one of your interview partners. Yeah. yeah. So what is the question? Um, the question is that, do you think that um, the loss of, 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 the slowly loss of national states in Europe and the foreseeable future as the United States of Europe makes people become more nationalist and become more, um, let's say, um, uh, xenophobic in some way. I mean, this, this is two different issues. If you're talking about the Jewish and anti-Semitism, mm -hmm. anti-Semitism exists in Europe for God knows how many years. I'm Sadly, it still exists, but it, has, it doesn't mean that if you are, for example, present yourself as a liberal, whatever liberal today means, yes. and you are modern and you call yourself progressive, yes. you know, this does not, and you are Black Lives Matter or whatever you are, this does not mean that you are going to love the Jews. You, are, you, are, you mm. still hate the Jews. This, the, it's, it's like, yeah, I mean, there's a lot what, of what is a, which is a very, very in interesting anti Semitism, yeah. yeah, of course, but, but it's very interesting that no matter what, you still find this. When Europe was very nationalistic, it was anti Semitic. When Europe became denationalized, so to speak, you know, or globalized, you know, it's still anti Semitic. I mean, it's like, Nothing changed in the atmosphere. It's so embedded in the European culture and anti-Semitism so, that it doesn't matter who you are. If you, if you compare Britain or Germany, what do you think where the people are more anti-Semitic in Britain or in Germany? Put it this way. And this is coming from me, Jewish. When I came to this world, about 90% of my family was already dead. Not natural death but by the Nazis, or by their emissaries, whatever, in Poland, in Romania. So, the history of the Holocaust is, is a history that I have been living all my life. My mother was in a concentration camp, survived the concentration camp, you know, and she would like sometimes wake up in the, the night and screaming, Hitler is coming, Hitler is coming. So, I'm very much into that because it's my family background like many Jews of the Ashkenazi origin. Um, and that's what it is. So, so in answering your question, 
I mean, if you rephrase it, I'll try to... Can you rephrase your question? Um, I would have to actually extend the question, not only extend rephrase it. it. Okay. I would have to extend it. So you see, for like, um, let's say, if, ah, we, yeah, okay. if we see national states and they're going to be merged, let me go back. and then you have also... So if you compare this kind of things, Germany to Britain, okay, from the German perspective, yes. if you are the grandson yes. of Germans who were in the SS or your uncle was in the SS yes. or whatever it is, I understand it, even though it's hard for me to, to admit it, but I understand it. You know, the very existence of Israel bothers you because it's a reminder of what your grandpa, opa and oma tried to do and they did not succeed. So in return, psychologically, as you say in Hebrew, afuch al you know, you become, you can become an anti-Semite because their existence bothers you because I could, Oma and Opa, do such a bad things, you know, so the only reason it could be because the Jews are really bad. That's yeah. why, because that's why Opa and Oma are, are good. You know, it's just the Jews are so bad, that's why they had to be killed or sent to Auschwitz or whatever it is. So I, I kind of understand the, the, the craziness of anti-Semitic Germans. But I cannot understand, for the life of me, you know, mm -hmm. unless I see it in, in a huge, in a much bigger lens of, of history, the anti-Semitism of the British. Mm -hmm. The German has a selfish interest in hating the Jew. Because if I hate the Jew, then my opa and oma, you know, or my uncle, you know, were not such bad people. It's again a fuch you know, but at least there is a psychological reason yeah. why I don't like the Jews. Yeah. As one Jew told me, you know, here in, in Germany there are so many people who hate Israel because Israel is a reminder to them of what they did. But in Britain there is no reason, so to speak, in, in quotes, you know, I also put it, to hate the Jew. But you still hate the Jew. For what? What has the Jew done to you? Mm. English person. So, um, what is your personal relationship to the German or with the German people? My personal relationship. Can. You know, my, my, father comes from, my, father, my, my, my father comes from Poland, my mother comes from Romania, and of course, before that, they came from Germany. The spelling of my name in the original yeah. is Tenenbaum, like the, the, the Christmas song Tenenbaum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Tenenbaum, you know this. Oh, Tenenbaum, <laughs> yeah. that's my real name. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. So, this is one thing. Yes. And the other thing is, you know, on the Ashkenazi Jews, you know, the, the, the language is Yiddish. in many places Yiddish. What is Yiddish? Yiddish is, is, is kind of a version of German, at least. Let's say more or less. More roughly or less, eighty yeah. percent of it is old German. Yes. You know, yes. so you are, we have that. Actually, from from the Rhineland-Pfalz area where I was yeah, born. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you have that. So you have already a connection to that. And and another connection is. I married, in Germany. Mm -hmm. My wife is. Oh Austria, really? She has been living in Germany for for God knows how uh -huh. long. So that's another one. And the other thing is. Even though I grew up in ultra orthodoxy, but when I left orthodoxy and I left the religious world and, and, and I fell in love with the world of literature and theater, you know, some of the literature, my, my, still my favorite literature is German literature. Mm -hmm. now, I love German literature. I understand it better than I understand American literature, yeah. you know, English literature, even though I love English literature. I love, but, I love but Swiss I'm connecting. authors a lot, actually. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. You know, one of my favorite is Hermann Esse, and of course, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, Siegfried Lanz, I mean, it's like, all yeah, of them, yeah. I mean, it's like, the, yeah, very exactly, beautiful. you know, it's like, yeah. I mean, all these things that are, Heinrich Heine, of course, you know, I mean, all those things that connect to a German culture, so, mm -hmm. so, to an extent, I like the culture, at least part of that culture. Yeah. The literary sensibility of the Germans, I love. Have you, you know, have I, I love the Germans. You know, there are things that they connect with me long before I even came to this country. Yeah. You know, so there is that connection, you know, of yeah. your forefathers with this land. Okay. You know, the, 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 the cultural things, you know, Ashkenaz. What is Ashkenaz? Ashkenaz is Germany. Yes. You say you're the Ashkenazi, you know, 
Ashkenaz, the world north of the Alps. So, exactly. So, so that's basically the, the, the German. Yeah. So, so it's part of your roots. Mm -hmm. Part of my roots are here. So nowadays... So of course I connect with it. Nowadays, in 2020, is there a German people? Gibt es ein deutsches Volk? I think that... Uh, I think that... Put it this way. I think that there is no pure folk anywhere. There are not even pure Jews. I mean, if you look at the Bible, I mean, big part yeah. of the Jews were actually Egyptian. So there is no pure race. I don't believe in that. But I believe that there is a, definitely a culture. A culture. There is a German culture. There is... When I land yeah. from a plane, how to talk about this, these days of Corona days. Yeah. You know, but when I land here, you know, when I come to Germany, I get off the plane. It feels like, okay, I, I got into a tribe. Mm -hmm. It's a different tribe. <laughs> you know, it's a feeling that uh, you came to yeah. a tribe. They have their own reasons. They have the, okay. Yes. It's like you know. I mean, yeah. it's like the same. There are of course difference between mm. between the northern people of Hamburg, for example, and the southern people of Bavaria, for example. Yes. But yeah. still, uh, and Berlin yeah. is totally a different story. But by the end of the day, there is a sense of th there is this is a tribe. Yes. When, when you watch two Germans talk. And talk in their mother tongue, and, 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 and you can see those tribes. They have their own, their reason, they have their culture, they have their similarities, they have the differences, but still there, are, there is always a sense, oh God, and there is good to it and bad and, to it, but, but that's what it is. And uh, Mr. Tenbom, why do you think that Jews and especially young Israelis are so obsessed with Germany and Berlin? Well, this is, this is a big story. I mean, you're talking about the. I'm going to tell you an answer that you probably won't like, but. Please go for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The, the young Jews who are obsessed with Germany, mm -hmm. they're usually on the left. And mm. for the most part, not all of them, but for mm. the most part on the left. Um, and you can see them, you can see them here in Berlin mainly. I mean, it's like you can see all the young Jews, you know, come here to live here and, and, and speak badly of Israel, speak the worst of Israel. Yes. Yes, so I encountered that. So if you are a Jew, and for 2,000 years you have been told how bad you are, and for 2,000 years you have been told how guilty you are for anything that happens in the world, and how ugly you are, some Jews buy the story. And they believe that the state of Israel is a racist state that, that controls whatever another nation, other people, whatever you call it. And so, if I tell you, Marcel, you are ugly, you are stupid, you are too fat, you are too dark or too brown or too white or whatever it is. And I keep saying it to you, day after day after day after day, by the end of the time you'll believe it. In a world without mirrors, maybe, yes. But, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I know what you're saying. You know, but you'll believe it, it doesn't matter to me or not, you can be the most beautiful person. It doesn't, yeah. doesn't mean it. Yeah. So, so some of these Jews, you know, bought a story that they are bad, that they are ugly, so they only unite with what they perceive as one of their chief enemies. Mm. Speaking that the Holocaust happened just 70 plus years ago, the best, the best place for self-hating is let's go to the place which started the Holocaust. They don't say it's subconscious, it's not conscious, it's subconscious. Yes. And you can see it because I interviewed a lot of young people here, a lot of young Israelis here. And what comes out of the mouth is like horrible. You know, Israel is to blame to this, and Israel to blame to that, Israel to blame yeah. to this, one and that. Israel is like the worst of anything that ever happened, you know. Mm. And that's why you came to Germany, because this is the most cultured nation in the world. Hello. So it's, it's a kind of reasoning. It, it's, it's being that we are all human, so much of what we thought is also psychotic, yes. you know, psychological, or at least. You know, so there is this psychology, you know. Okay, if you really think I'm bad, I really love you. You go today to, to even to Hasidic Jews. Yeah, you go to Hasidic Jews. I, I asked a, Hasidic, a, a son of a Hasidic couple, ultra-Orthodox couple yeah. in Jerusalem, eight-year-old. Yes. I asked him a question he, never, he was never asked before. Mm -hmm. I asked him, one day you are going to get older? Yeah. And you are going to marry. Do you have a dream girl? Yeah. How does she look? This guy from Jerusalem says to me, his dream girl is a tall, 
a blonde woman with blue eyes mm. and a non-Jewish nose. <laughs> Small nose. I mean, it's like... Yeah, it's, it's, uh, like it's so a psychological... Deep, it's so, so deep in yeah. the culture. You know, why are there so many Israelis, you know, Jews who think that the ultimate yeah. beauty yeah. is a German? Bara Faeli. Yeah, or is a German. Yeah. She has to be German, she has to be yeah. blonde. Because if you are dark, you're not beautiful enough. You know, because if you have a dark hair, you're not beautiful enough. If, if you look Polish, which is horrible. But if the Germans, you know, it's like, it's the ultimate... Yes. It's part of this, but what you call in Yiddish Meshigas. Mr. Tenbo, we have, uh, at the time is running, we only have one question left. Yeah. So isn't part of that complex maybe also that you put a Palestinian flag to cover your no, mouth? No, no, this is what I did. The, the reason uh, I mean why I did that, scarf. the reason yeah. that I did that, when, when exactly when, when the flicht, the, 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 it became like yeah. mandatory yeah. to wear this. And, and it looks very like... Uh, this like is a palimas. Light, and it looks very, the fabric looks very light. Yeah, like of course. You don't this sweat is a too much under it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's a poly mask. And the reason why I took it is, I, I, so I wanted to buy a mask, you know, because I say, and I don't yeah. like the green mask. I put it, I didn't like it. So I went to a nice place, you know, where I, I presently reside, you know, is in, in, in Hamburg. Yes. So I went to, to a nice place in a, one of the most luxurious, you know, places in Hamburg. Yes. And I went to a designer shop, you know, as, to get my mask. Okay. My mask. And that's what they got. And this is what they got. And, and, the lady told, and the lady told me, you know, that this is uh, sold out. This is my last, the last one they had. So, so you are talking about a culture <laughs> that, okay, so remember when it started all the things that you have to yeah. wear a mask and, yeah. and everybody thought we are dying and everybody thought we are all dying, you know, yes. not like today it's more relaxed, but you yeah. know, remember like you're talking about a month ago yeah. and everybody thought we are all dying and, and you must wear a mask to protect you. And the first thought in Eppendorf, what do you yeah. think, the people, the oh. rich people, what do you think about Louis Vuitton, let me show, Hermes? Let, let me show <laughs> my identity with the Palestinian people. Just before I die, let me show. <laughs> Long live Palestine. And I said, it's so crazy that you can't even stop thinking about it. Now is that you are thinking, you are staring at death, you are staring at your grave, you think, right? And what do you do? Let me put a poly mask so, to show my identity. Yeah. You don't want to show your identity with the Muslims in China, for example, yeah. but one million of them are forced to do whatever, I know, you know. And, you know, Mr. Oh, but, you know. Mr. Tenbaum, I'm so sorry, our camera is running out of battery. Okay. And it's great talking to you, and I'm Same sure you, there are many more good stories in this book, Allein unter Briten. What's the English title? The Taming of the Jew. No, Allein unter Briten, The Taming of the Jew. The Taming of the Jew. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. cool. The Taming of the yeah. Jew. And it's going to come out later this year. And you can probably order it without um, a shipping charge on the bookdepository.com, also to Israel and in Germany. Please go to your local bookstore. And uh, thank you for watching us. Please leave a like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Bitte like den Kanal und vergesst nicht zu abonnieren. Thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Bis bald. Litraut. Ciao.